In the annals of history, few civilizations have left as profound an impact on medicine as ancient Rome. The Romans, inheritors of the medical knowledge of the Greeks, not only transformed and expanded upon it, but also revolutionized the field in ways that paved the way for practices that still resonate in modern healthcare. Today, we embark on an enlightening and intricate journey to unlock the secrets of ancient Roman medicine, delving into its foundations, practices, innovations, and the remarkable figures who shaped its evolution over centuries. To fully appreciate Roman medicine, we must first recognize its deep connections to Greek medical traditions. The Greeks, especially Hippocrates, are credited with laying the groundwork for the ethical and philosophical aspects of medicine, particularly in clinical observation and the idea of the humors that governed the human body. The Romans, however, were relentless pragmatists. They inherited Greek theories, but infused them with their own innovations. Unlike the Greeks, who often viewed health through a purely philosophical lens, the Romans believed that health was deeply intertwined with the environment, emphasizing practical measures such as clean water, sanitation, and public health infrastructure to prevent disease. One of the most remarkable contributions of Roman medicine was their emphasis on public health, an area in which they excelled like no other ancient civilization. The Romans were unmatched in their engineering capabilities, and their aqueducts remain one of the most iconic symbols of their brilliance. These grand structures carried fresh water from distant mountain springs into the cities, providing a reliable source of clean water for drinking, bathing, and sanitation. This engineering marvel was not only a display of Roman ingenuity, but also an early form of disease prevention. The availability of clean water was crucial in reducing the spread of waterborne illnesses long before germ theory was understood. In tandem with this, the Romans built sophisticated sewage systems, like the famous Cloaca Maxima in Rome, which carried waste out of the city, dramatically improving urban health. However, Roman public health initiatives extended far beyond infrastructure. Hygiene became a societal priority, reflected in the construction of the great Roman baths. These vast complexes, known as thermae, were not merely luxurious indulgences, but integral to the daily lives of citizens. Bathing was a social activity, and the baths served as communal centers where Romans could cleanse their bodies, relax, and interact with others. Many of these baths featured systems that allowed users to transition from hot to cold rooms, a process believed to strengthen the body and improve health. In this sense, bathing was seen not just as a necessity, but as a vital part of maintaining public health and social cohesion. Roman innovations were not limited to public health systems. In the realm of surgery, they made astonishing strides, despite the limited tools of the time. Roman surgeons developed a range of surgical instruments that were ahead of their time, allowing them to perform procedures such as amputations, cataract surgery, and even advanced treatments for trauma. Trepanation, one of the most intriguing Roman practices, involved drilling a hole in the skull to relieve pressure or treat head injuries, a risky but sometimes life-saving procedure. Roman military surgeons, known as Medici, were particularly skilled, gaining hands-on experience in the harsh realities of battlefield medicine. Their expertise helped save countless lives, demonstrating a high degree of skill in managing wounds, fractures, and infections. 
One towering figure in Roman medicine is Galen, a physician whose work influenced the development of medicine for centuries after his time. Born in Pergamon in 129 AD, Galen's contributions were monumental. His dissections of animals, which were often done out of necessity due to the prohibition of human dissection, allowed him to develop theories on anatomy and physiology that dominated medical thought for over a millennium. Galen's theory of the four humors, blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile, was central to Roman medicine and became the basis for treatments focused on restoring balance within the body. Galen's influence extended far beyond his lifetime. His works became essential reading for medieval physicians and were translated and studied for centuries in both the Islamic world and Europe. But the legacy of Roman medicine goes beyond surgery and anatomy. The Romans also explored pharmacology with remarkable depth and scope. They catalogued extensive herbal remedies and medicinal recipes incorporating knowledge from earlier civilizations like the Egyptians and Greeks. The Roman physician Dioscorides compiled his influential work De Materia Medica, a comprehensive guide that documented over 600 plants and their medicinal properties. This text remained the definitive herbal reference in Europe for over 1,500 years. Roman pharmacology made use of a wide range of substances, opium for pain relief, honey for wound care, and various herbs for healing, showcasing their deep understanding of the natural world and its therapeutic potential. However, it's important to remember that despite these advancements, Roman medicine had its limitations and flaws. The humoral theory, while influential, led to treatments that were sometimes ineffective or harmful. Bloodletting, a practice designed to balance the body's humors, was common but often weakened patients instead of helping them. Additionally, Roman surgeons, despite their skill, lacked knowledge about infection control, which meant that even routine surgeries carried a high risk of complications. Medicine in ancient Rome wasn't confined to the elite. While wealthy citizens could afford the best trained physicians, much of the population relied on local healers, herbalists, and midwives. These practitioners often blended folk medicine with formal medical practices, creating a rich tapestry of medical knowledge and treatments that reflected the diverse nature of Roman society. Women, in particular, played an important role in healthcare, especially in childbirth and domestic medicine, though their contributions are less well documented. Religion also played a significant role in Roman medicine. The Romans worshipped a pantheon of gods, many of whom were associated with health and healing. Asclepius, the god of medicine, was one of the most revered, and his temples, called Asclepiaia, served as centers of healing where the sick sought divine cures. Rituals, offerings, and even dreams were believed to influence health, demonstrating the Romans' holistic approach to medicine, which often combined spiritual, physical, and psychological elements. The fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century marked a profound turning point not just in political and cultural history, but also in the trajectory of medical knowledge and practice, as the centralized authority of Rome collapsed under the weight of invasions, internal strife, and economic turmoil. The sophisticated public health systems, medical infrastructure, and scholarly pursuits that had flourished under Roman rule, began to deteriorate. This period of fragmentation saw the dissolution of the organized and pragmatic approach to medicine 
that had characterized the Roman Empire for centuries. With the decline of Roman cities, the vital systems of public health, such as aqueducts, baths, and sanitation systems, fell into disrepair, leading to the re-emergence of diseases that had been previously controlled. Roman medicine, once a blend of empirical observation and practical application, became increasingly fragmented across the former territories of the empire. The loss of central institutions meant that medical knowledge, once meticulously documented in texts by figures like Galen and Dioscorides, became difficult to access. Libraries were destroyed, and the infrastructure that supported the transmission of medical knowledge was disrupted. This led to a gradual fading of advanced medical practices, particularly in the more isolated regions of the former Western Roman Empire. The reliance on folk remedies, superstitions, and religious healing practices took precedence over scientific approaches, further diluting the practical aspects of Roman medicine. However, the story of Roman medicine did not end with the fall of the Western Empire. In the Eastern Roman Empire, known as the Byzantine Empire, the intellectual and cultural legacy of Rome endured, particularly in the realm of medicine. The Byzantines viewed themselves as the rightful heirs to the Roman legacy, and they took great care to preserve and expand upon the vast body of Roman medical knowledge. Centers of learning, such as those in Constantinople and Alexandria, became repositories of Roman and Greek medical texts. These texts were copied, studied, and commented upon by Byzantine scholars, ensuring the survival of critical medical theories and practices. One of the most significant ways in which Roman medical knowledge was preserved in the Byzantine Empire was through the establishment of hospitals. Byzantine hospitals, or Xenodokia, were state-run institutions that provided medical care for the poor and sick, a remarkable development that mirrored the Roman emphasis on public health. These hospitals were staffed by trained physicians who utilized Roman medical practices, including surgery, pharmacology, and clinical observation. The continuity of these practices within Byzantine medical institutions allowed the preservation of much of Rome's practical medical wisdom. Furthermore, Byzantine scholars played a critical role in transmitting Roman medical knowledge to later generations, particularly through the translation of texts into Greek and Arabic. One of the most important figures in this process was Orobasius, a 4th century Byzantine physician who compiled the medical compilations, a 70-book work based on the writings of Galen and earlier medical authorities. Orobasius's work preserved much of the Roman medical tradition and was later used by Islamic scholars who further refined and expanded upon these ideas. This cross-cultural transmission of medical knowledge through the Byzantine Empire helped lay the foundation for the eventual reintroduction of classical medical ideas into Western Europe during the Renaissance. Byzantine medical scholars, such as Aetius of Amida, Paul of Aegina, and Alexander of Trallis, also contributed original works that built upon Roman practices. Their writings were highly influential in both the Byzantine and Islamic worlds, where Roman medicine was studied, preserved, and enhanced. The Islamic Golden Age, in particular, became a period of significant medical advancement, with scholars such as Avicenna, Ibn Sina, and Al-Razi, Razas, incorporating Roman, Greek, and Persian medical knowledge into their own works. These texts, once translated back into Latin during the medieval period, 
would become the cornerstone of medical education in Europe, ensuring that Roman medical ideas continued to influence Western medicine for centuries to come. Thus, while the fall of the Western Roman Empire led to a period of decline and fragmentation in medical knowledge, the Byzantine Empire served as a bridge between the ancient world and the medieval period. Through their efforts to preserve, adapt, and transmit Roman medical knowledge, the Byzantines played a crucial role in ensuring that the achievements of Roman medicine were not lost to the sands of time. Their dedication to the intellectual and practical legacy of Rome allowed future generations to rediscover and build upon the medical advancements of the ancient world, shaping the course of medicine for centuries to follow. The legacy of Roman medicine is a testament to the ingenuity, practicality, and relentless pursuit of knowledge that characterized the empire. The Romans not only advanced surgical techniques and public health, but also laid the groundwork for a medical system that blended empirical observation with traditional remedies. Their contributions, while not perfect, were foundational to the evolution of modern medicine. In conclusion, Roman medicine stands as a shining example of how practical innovation, combined with a deep respect for nature and a belief in the power of observation, can shape the course of history. The Romans unlocked secrets about the human body and health that would resonate through the ages, influencing civilizations for centuries. Their emphasis on hygiene, surgery, and pharmacology left an indelible mark on the practice of medicine. Today, as we continue to explore the complexities of health and healing, we must honor the lessons of the past, recognizing that the pursuit of medical knowledge is a journey that spans millennia. With the Romans as key pioneers in this enduring quest,